Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Chef Yusuf where we learn to cook the Islamic way. Today I'm gonna go over um, a dish that is very well known in the Holy Land, my favorite place in the world, Palestine. Uh, the name of the dish is Magluba and it translates to upside down. You will see why it is uh, translated that way in the end. It has a big finale in the end. So before we start actually we have to go through the, the rules of cooking. The first rule of cooking is safety. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, O who you believe, take your precautions. Be careful, basically. Even like most experienced cook will tell you that, you know, this is one of the most important rules in kitchen. The second rule is do not waste. We don't want to waste food. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, eat and drink and do not be wasteful. Wala tusrifu. Do not waste. Basically, you have to wash your hands. You have to clip your hands. Uh, I'll share a hadith with you. Uh, it's narrated by Sulaiman al-Farisi. Salman al was talking to the Prophet Sallallahu He told him, I read in the Torah that the blessing of food consists in wudu before it. So I mentioned it to the Prophet Sallallahu and he said, the blessing of food consists in wudu before it and wudu after it, basically. So the best thing is, I mean, wash your hands and basically do wudu. I mean, why not? You'll have more barakah and you'll say Bismillah while we start to cook. Oh, there are some, some of the uh, safety things that, especially for, for men and women, uh, especially your hair, try to you know, your hair not to be caught on fire or not to drop on food, especially for guys, you know, if you guys have a long beard, make sure you somehow be safe. So in my case, I'm going to go ahead and wear this and it will be my uh, kufi slash uh, chef hat. And uh, please guys, you know, um, I mean, if your beard is out of control, the last thing you need is your beard to caught on fire and you'll be punching your face trying to take it out. So, you know, try to somehow figure a solution for that. Okay, let's start, shall we? So, Magluba is a Middle Eastern. Um, it, it varies from country to country, but the main ingredient is rice, lamb, or chicken, cauliflower, eggplant. So, the main, um, the main theme of this uh, dish is actually the broth or the, or the stock or the soup that we're going to use for, to boil the rice in. And this is the most flavor, flavorful part of the dish, and you can ask any cook. Today, we're going to focus or we're going to talk about the concept of broth and how to make the best broth you ever had. Now we're going to use a lot of spices, but basically I want to give you the basics and then from the basics you can add on what you desire and what you wish. So stock will enhance the flavor of all of your dishes and you will see it after this episode. Uh, you have taken a cooking skill to a whole new level. Now in order to make uh, the, uh, the broth, we're going to talk about uh, three awesome ingredients. Uh, in French cuisine they call them meripoix. Uh, basically they are onions celery and carrots now these three ingredients you can make unbelievable imagination with these three and some people uh, replace the uh, the carrots with either uh, green pepper or uh, corn so basically you have the salty uh, from the um, celery and the sweetness from the the carrots and the flavorness from the awesome balance i'm going to chop them finer than usually that uh, broth is that usually take longer time to cook and because if you if you keep boiling it, it will become a puree and you don't want to have that. So if you're, if you're making a dish that, you know, contains six hours of cooking, you might want to chop them large chunks. But because we are going to do this in really fast, maybe like it's going to take less than half an hour to make this dish or to, to boil the water, I mean, we're going to use the, you know, a quick chopping technique. And I just want to tell, I'll talk about a small story um, in the Quran is when Banu Israel were walking in the desert and they were eating manna and salwa, which is two sufficient food Allah gave them. But they were, you know, bored because they were eating every day. So they went to Prophet Musa and they told him. So they went to Musa and they asked him, Oh Musa, you know, ask your Lord to bring from the earth, uh, from the beans and the, um, from the onions and etc. So they, they were asking for ingredients. And Musa told them, do you, do, you, do you prefer what is low than what Allah gave you, which is high? So basically this concept, um, I want to talk about is the more ingredient versus less ingredient uh, because we have you know um, more ingredient usually we do not chew very properly when people ask everything in the menu we kind of keep swallowing swallowing the food and that has an you know a, a healthy effect in the long run so when you have less choices you properly choose the food you probably focus on what you have in front of you and you enjoy it more and you don't waste it you don't waste money and the idea of having less food 
is the idea of you know baraka. So something very suspicious or uh, like manna and salwa is not necessarily for people to have ten different type of food. When Allah gave us the ability to have a lot of food, uh, we should we shouldn't create you know much of it. So rather than having ten choices, we'll try to keep less choices. And for this today's just we'll try to keep uh, you know three choices. We'll, we'll, we'll add uh, cauliflower, eggplant, and chicken. So here you go, Mary Poch. This is the concept, and when you when you master this, basically everything you cook, honestly, if you use these three ingredients, you will have an awesome flavor. So I'll put this aside, and I'll just gonna go ahead and chop, you know, clean the cauliflower. This is a small piece, by the way, from the grocery store. They were having a sale for the, on the organic uh, items. When it comes to cauliflower, I like to cut it from the bottom. And that kind of, uh, what you want to do honestly is you want to cut them in uh, edible sizes. So you can do that on your own. Now these, these pieces honestly, you can just clean them up and you can put them in the broth actually. This is what I was talking about, the leftover pieces that we can also use to put them in the soup. Why not? We don't want to waste food, right? This dish I'm, uh, I'm working on today is going to be enough for two people or four people. And the reason I'm saying that is because the Prophet ﷺ said, meaning that the, the food of one person is equivalent to two people and the food of two people is equivalent to four people. So with the, with the, if we have the barakah, inshallah, this will be enough for four people. But in, uh, you know, in, in the measurement, we'll just uh, say that it is enough for two people. When it comes to the eggplant, I like to cut them long way. Most people cutting this way but when you cut them long ways it will have um, a better texture in my opinion so I'm gonna go ahead and cut them long ways and what you want to do you want to cut them like a little bit thick it's not not too thin not too thick this will be okay but basically when it comes to the eggplant we'll go ahead and salt them so we can break and take the moist out of them the idea of this is when you deep fry it it does not suck oil Honestly, I do not care about this process because it's, some people say it will have a bad result when it sucks a lot of oil But because today we're gonna use olive oil. That's right olive oil when it comes to main dishes and main cooking We will only use olive oil. I want to talk about frying the ingredients and to fry the ingredients uh, Let me just uh, give you an idea about olive oil. Now olive oil is more expensive than vegetable oil but you do not go to any grocery store to buy olive oil. You have to go to a specific places to buy olive oil from the Italian restaurant or from the Italian stores. Now, to deep fry things, you do not have to buy the most expensive olive oil. You can use palm oil, but why? Why you want to do that? I went to the supermarket and I got this type of olive oil. This type of olive oil cost me $14.99. $14.99. And honestly, most you will find corn oil that is more expensive with this quantity. This is awesome, it really tastes like olive oil, um, but most of the cheap olive oil that you buy, I think it's fake, it does not smell, does not taste like olive oil, but it says olive oil. And I'll give you an example, I bought this olive oil for $12.99, this olive oil for $12.99, and we're going to use this because the other one I just finished the other day, so we'll use this type of olive oil uh, to deep fry, only to fry and to cook with, because we don't want to waste and we don't want to become from the wasteful, as we mentioned. But when it comes to taste, an awesome taste from olive oil, I really, in the state, when you go to the supermarket and you see the shelf and you see all of these types of olive oil, honestly, you cannot try each one of them. It will take you a year to, more than a year, like 10 years to just finish all of them. Because they sell them in large quantities and you don't know which one is good, which one is bad. So when it comes to deep frying, we don't care about really the taste. We use olive oil because it is healthy. I'm not going to talk about the nutrition fact about it you know you can search it on the internet just to let you know that the extra virgin olive oil it should be stored in a cool you know away from the sunlight and usually that's why they use the the uh, aluminum uh, you know case uh, and not really a glass clear case just, just to let you know and by the way when it comes to olive oil i just want to say that the prophet sallallahu said that eat olive oil and you know spread yourself with it it is it comes from a blessed tree and by the way, olive oil is mentioned seven times in the Quran, just to let you know. Six or seven times. Olives are mentioned six times, oil one time, that makes it seven times. Okay, so you can honestly deep fry this stuff, but I mean more than this much, it should not be necessary. 
So inshallah, this will heat up. We'll come back after the break and we will put everything together. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Chef Yusuf Show. Right now the, the oil is really hot. If you have a thermometer, you can measure it. It has to be 340 degrees. Uh, if you don't, then what you can do is you can grab one of these things and you know when it starts to cook, there you go, they are good. So we'll put the ingredients in. Allahu Akbar, be careful. We'll go ahead and cover it to keep the moist and to keep the flavor locked in basically. And by the way, if, if if, if an incident happened that uh, the kitchen caught on fire, what you can do, you can spray some, uh, some cornstarch or some, um, some flour on it to take it out. Do not put water, do not add water, do not throw water in here, you will be burnt severely. You will see, I'll show you a, a clip, what happened when you put water with oil when it's burning. So inshallah be careful, take your precautions how Allah taught us in the Quran. And I uh, just want to mention a few things about spices and working with spices. Usually I found that when it comes to cauliflower, cumin will work awesome with fried cauliflower and turmeric, turmeric, the yellow coloring agent, use, um, it works very well with fried eggplants. So I will use this to flip everything over and you see how the color is? This is where you want to be at. So right now the eggplants are done, we will go ahead and take it out, put it in the filtering agent filter the oil and we can put some curcum on here so this oil I'm not done with it yet we still have the little bit of tomato and before we do the tomato because the tomato is gonna basically collapse everything I'm gonna put some uh, pine nuts basically this is for uh, show and presentation so I'll put some and uh, just to from experience just want to let you know you have to keep stirring this really quick because they will go they will be done really fast if you know what I mean and finally we will fry the tomatoes and when you fry the tomatoes make sure and make sure and I will repeat it three times make sure you have this to cover it because basically hell will break loose inside now for two people basically you need two cups of rice and for water it's always two to three ratio and if you need a mathematical uh, equation to figure out you can I'll show you a mathematical equation but if you have two cups of rice three cups of not water but stock some people put the rice in water um, this is for two reasons. One of the reasons is to take the starch out. The other reason is to make it softer and the cooking process will be more well done basically. So we'll go ahead and start the, the broth concept. When it comes to broth, we need something that is deep. So in my case, we'll use this. And what I'll do, I'll put a little bit of uh, oil on top because we're gonna start to fry the chicken. So what we'll do, go ahead and heat this and when it comes to the chicken I would like to use all spice so we'll put a little bit on them on both sides okay now some people like to fry this some people like to boil them and some people like to fry them boil them and grill them just to make sure the chicken is dead we will start the cooking process And we will wait a few seconds and we will put our magic ingredients in here. We let it for like a few minutes and then we'll put boiling water on top of it. While we're waiting for this, I just want to mention a few things about our program. What we want to do is we want to, we just, we don't want to make ingredient cooking show, but we want to teach the people how to actually, you know, take the step and start cooking. There's many reasons that why men should cook and I'll share one of the reasons. One of the reasons a man should learn how to cook because when he cooks, he will know and he will appreciate the difficulty and he will appreciate how his wife will cook for him. Because when you, when you cook the first time, it's, it's going to taste horrible and you're going to taste it and you're going to say, SubhanAllah, oh wife, all this time I was criticizing your food and look at me. So this is one of the good things that we might want to look at. So we'll put boiling water on top of here. And by the way, if you don't notice, I am adding a lot of water. If you ask me why, there is an awesome reason for that. I will share it with you in one moment. There is a hadith, Abu Dhar 
al Ghafari reported, radiallahu anhu reported that the Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, he was talking to Abu Dar and he was telling them, Abu Dar, when you prepare the broth, add water to that to give it as present to your neighbors. So you want to make a lot of broth so you can give it as a as a present to your neighbor. So when we boil the broth, you make sure after you boil it, since the chicken is really, you know, it started the cooking process, so you can put it down to medium. Now what we can do, we can add spices on it. So what we can do is I will share with you some of my favorite spices to add. First thing we can use is you can add a cinnamon stick. Second, you're gonna need some black pepper. And then we'll use some bay leaves. A little bit, two, maybe three leaves. And we will also use, uh, this is called gloves. I don't know if you can see them. Well, now, when it comes to ingredients, when you look at the like cookbook, they will tell you use half a teaspoon, have, a, have this and have that. And honestly, I want to teach you to use your hand. Measure it with your hand. Um, Allah give you a, you know a sense of balance and and you know you have to figure out how much it take how much salt it takes to, to make it to perfect consistency. So this is a, an experience process. So let your hands basically tell you how much to put and don't rely on the recipe books and and etc. So uh, this is again if you are from the Indian subcontinent you want to put more of it and if you are from um, for Mexico for example oh you know what I'm gonna put some jalapenos. Make sure we wash it. Maybe maybe cut it in half. And ginger. I don't have fresh ginger. I have frozen ginger. For some reason, we froze the ginger, which is not really, really recommended. But you know what? It lasts longer. One of the things also I like to put is cardamom. I like to put only three pieces. If you have a grinder, go ahead and grind it. If you don't have a grinder, you can basically collapse it like this. Added. And oh, by the way, I want to share with you a hadith. The hadith the Prophet used to love to start doing things from the right side whenever possible. So when we're performing, uh, when we're cooking, um, we will st we'll try to use, you know, for example, when we cut, we'll cut from the right side to the left side. The other thing, the Prophet, there is a hadith about the Prophet, about the knife actually. I just want to share with you a hadith that talks about the knife. The Prophet, uh, peace be upon him, was brought a piece of cheese. So he called a knife and he mentioned the name of Allah and Karat. So the same thing, we, we use the right to left process and we'll say the name of Allah whenever we cut any food or vegetable. Inshallah. And Islamic cooking is about simplicity, about authenticity and being healthy. So inshallah when we come back, we'll see you in a few minutes. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Chef Yusuf where you learned the bean while cooking. So uh, while we were away, let me show you what happened. This is the remaining oil, just to let you know. So this is uh, definitely not going to store this. So I prepared um, a pot to put the water or the broth in. What we want to do, we're going to go ahead and filter it out. We're going to uh, dry the rice as well. And this is where we're going to put, uh, we layer everything together. So some people like to uh, spray the rice on the bottom just because it usually in the bottom it will stick but in my case I would like to put the chicken because I really really like the chicken to be burnt a little bit so we put whatever you want to be burned basically in the bottom some people like to put tomatoes slices of tomatoes so we'll put this we'll start with this and we'll basically start with the ingredients we'll layer um, the eggplant we'll put the cauliflower on top of that we'll put more eggplant on top of those The remaining of the cauliflower and tomatoes basically are for like coloring agents and it will make the dish basically look better okay so we will put the rice on top and we will try to spray it a little bit one thing that most some people do is people put uh, a, a plate like this on top of the rice so it will not um, so everything will not be you know um, it doesn't go all over the place and I will use my favorite cup 
to measure this. So basically, what is the ratio? It is three to two ratio. So we put two cups of rice. We'll put basically three cups of broth. And when it comes to broth, usually you want to have the clearer broth. You want it to, to, to remove, you know, the, the things that comes on top. And uh, so this will put on high heat at the beginning. And at a later episode, we'll talk about how to master the rice. But this is not really about the rice. This is about really the broth and the and how to mix all of the ingredients together. So we need something to put on the top. Here you go. So we'll keep it like this until the water start boiling and I'll show you exactly when to turn the, the fire or the, the heat all the way down. So we'll keep it on high first. So basically if you, as you can see we did generate some dishes but it's not that much and you know it's really awesome when you prepare something for your wife especially you know in the United States if your wife comes back from school or from work and she's tired and she goes inside the home and she sees this awesome meal but at the same time if you have like the dishes all over the place that really could backfire on you. So what you want to do is uh, you want to, you know, it will be easier if you do the dishes while you do the, uh, while you cook and make sure everything is, you know, really awesome. So this is the remaining of the broth that we have. As you can see, we have a lot. Prophet Sallallahu told us to give it to our neighbors and try it. I mean, why not? I mean, try something new in your life and this will combine the unity of the community and make the unity of your neighbors more. And this is what will basically rise, rise the nation. Getting to know your neighbors is something definitely in islam that is that's something that we should do so this is about the hadith you can keep this for future you know you can put it on any type of rice on top of any when you make rice or any dish basically or any type of soup this will be awesome you can keep it in the fridge uh, for later use okay so um, right now the the water is boiling so i'm gonna put it like to medium high until you know until the water goes like at the same level with the rice and i will show you in one moment uh, but by the way, regarding to salt, when it comes to salt, I, I told you how to measure it in your hand. When it comes to, to rice, you have to salt in the, the water first, basically, or the stock or the broth to give the flavor of the rice. All right. So it is very important not to leave the rice while it's bo boiling. And right now, I just want to show you how it is. Oh, by the way, I just want to wear my kufi or my safety hat. So I will take the cover off and I will show you. Basically, when the rice is like this, this is the only way to get the rice, um, you know, cooked, basically. So what we can do, we can use our multitasker here. We'll remove this because we do not need it no more. We'll put it back. Put the cover back, it's very important. And put it down all the way. And this is the most time consuming of the dish. Usually it takes 30 minutes for the rice to, or for the, for the basically to, for the stock to evaporate I'm gonna use this so we turn the fire off we remove the cover do a quick taste test taste Allahu Akbar okay so for the grand finale you will turn the casserole upside down just like we showed you and that's where the name comes from at this point, you want to leave it like this for a few minutes. And let's take a look at the final results. Allahu Akbar! As you can see, we have burnt. And that is the reason why we left a little bit of rice. So, but if that is fine. Actually, that is the best part of the dish. Okay, so this is how it looks. And we will compare it from a picture online. Let's see how it looks. A picture with this and an online picture. Allahu Akbar, it has not, it doesn't look anything like it. But uh, this is uh, close enough. So, we will finish it off with the, either the pine nuts or the hazelnuts or any kind of nuts that you fried, that we fried early on. Basically today we covered, uh, from a culinary aspect, we covered the, the aspect of broth and the, uh, the, uh, the onion, celery and carrot combination. We covered some um, of the olive oil. Next time, inshallah, we'll show you how to use the knife and some techniques to use on the knife. So there you have it, magluba with the yogurt and cucumber. So for the next time, we do thank you for watching the Yusuf show. Alhamdulillah, hamdan kathiran, mubarakan, ghayra, mukfi, wala muadda, wala mustaghni an Rabbina.
So uh, till next time with Chef Yusuf. Assalamu alaikum. Bye bye. Assalamu alaikum. And finally, I forgot to mention uh, that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he used to finish his meal. He used to say praises to be to Allah who gave us food and drink and made us Muslims. For till next time with Chef Yusuf. Assalamu alaikum. Bye bye.